get to reading. And then maybe a couple of these names I can't pronounce just right, but it'll be all right. And it said, And it came to pass in the same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, the king of Judah, in the fourth year and the, and the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azar, even the prophet which was in Gibeon, spoke unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priest and all the people, saying, Amen. I want you to get the concept of this false man of God. Amen is in the house. Amen. And Jeremiah is in the house also. And he speaks this word, church. We have definitely, it's time that we, we get to a place to understand, to be able to let the Spirit prick us to know what thus saith the Lord is saying. And it said, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again in this place all the vessels of the Lord house that Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again this place to Jehoiakim, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord. Amen. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood, amen, in the house of the Lord. Y'all please take note of this. And, the, and he said, even the prophet Jeremiah said, amen, that thus the Lord do so. The Lord perform thy words which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house. And all that carried, that all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. But there again, look at verse number 7. But nevertheless, hear ye thou this word that I speak in thy ears and in the ears of all the people. Watch this very closely. That the prophets that have been before me and, the old, and before the old prophecy, both against many countries and against many great kingdoms of war and evil and pestilence, Watch this in verse 9. That the prophet which prophesies peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known. Amen. That the Lord hath truly sent him. Lord Jesus, we come before you tonight, Lord God. There is none like you, Jesus. And Lord God, we feel such a presence in this place tonight. Almighty God, Jesus, we look at, Lord God, for great things from you, Jesus. Lord God, we're looking for mighty things from you, Jesus, tonight, Lord God. But Lord, we don't want to be deceived, Lord God. We know that there's a fight, Lord God, brewing in hell tonight, Jesus. Trying to discourage, trying to take, Lord God, what belongs to you, Lord God. They cannot be peace, Lord God. In the last days, Lord Jesus, uh, for sure we know that Sam, Satan, Satan uh, amen, is running rampant, Lord God. And tonight, Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, uh, to open our spiritual eye tonight, Lord God, uh, and our heart and our understanding, Lord Jesus. Uh, I'll quote your word again that your people is destroyed. Amen. For the lack of knowledge and understanding of you, Lord God. I ask you tonight, Jesus, that you would move in a mighty way in this place, Lord God. And Lord God, let us not leave the same way that we got here tonight. In your mighty name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we living in the day, church. My God, my God, we living in the day. Amen. I know that I'm not the best reader, amen, in this word. Amen. That if you call anything, amen, that we're living in a day and age, that it seems, Sister Karen, that men want to prophesy like using a sawed-off shotgun. Let me tell you something right now. What was prophesied in this word, amen, 
The Satan can't have what belongs to God. Amen. That is the revelant church. We may not be the ones at the forefront runners, amen, of the gospel because we might be a disobedient. We might not heed to the word of God. I want to get an amen in this same church. Amen. But let me tell you something, what it says in the book of Revelation, amen, that he would change, amen. He would take your candlestick and then move it to another, amen. Let me tell you this, amen. God is going to bring up an army. God is going to use somebody in the last days, amen, to use, amen, his glory, amen, and to use his anointing, amen. It's real what, the, amen, Hananiah said in this word tonight, church, amen, it ain't even irrelevant at all. What belongs to God is his God's, amen. Hallelujah, in the last days, they's going to, he's going to pour out his spirit. Sister Karen, there's going to be a revival, amen. Amen. And I know that we've been hindered a long time. I know that the church has been hindered. I know it has seesawed back and forth. Amen. We'll, we'll grow 30 or 40 and fall back down to 10. Sometimes we get discouraged. Amen. And that's what I said about Brother Lodge is why we need to pray. Because it takes a man, amen, with a vision to yeah. refuse to lose, amen. Yeah. Amen, wanting to get the gospel out. Wanting to sit on the side of the highways because that's what the word says, amen, for us to go to the highways and to the byways and to compel them to come in, amen. And this is what Jeremiah is saying, amen. Let's just make sure that you're going to be a true prophet in this, amen. Any man that's going to speak peace, Amen. In the time of war, there is something wrong. Amen. Let me tell you, when the enemy comes in, the Bible says that he would lift up. Amen. A standard against it. Amen. We're not in a place. Amen. Willing to make peace with Satan. We're not in a battle. Amen. To negotiate. Amen. The front runner of this thing. Amen. We're in battle, church. Amen. This is what Jeremiah is saying. Amen. And Hananiah, the story goes, if you want to read the rest of this. The Bible says that Hananiah, amen, takes that Jeremiah comes in with a wooden yoke upon his neck and Hananiah breaks it off of him. And he says, this is how the Lord is going to break yoke, amen, off of the ch children of Judea and off the children of Israel. Well, let me tell you something, church, amen, whatever a man soweth, so shall he reap. Amen, do you hear what I'm saying tonight? Amen, it ain't going to be man that breaks bondage in this. It's going to be the Holy Ghost because Jeremiah told Hananiah, he said, it ain't going to be by wood, but it's going to be by iron. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's going to be caught. Amen. And on the way to the uncaught, amen, it's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gets a hold of them and brings them back. Amen. Y'all better listen to what I'm saying, amen. There's too many fakes that's out here running around wanting to say, well, I'm a prophet. Well, I'm an apostle. I'm this and I'm that, amen. Just because you wear a suit and a tie, amen, and a few chill bumps run up and down your spine don't mean that it comes from the Lord, amen. And this is what Jeremiah is saying, amen. If it be so, we'll know it so, amen, because it will come to pass, amen. And that's what Jeremiah said in the Word. He said, if a man has got a dream, let him tell it like a dream, amen. But when the Word of the Lord comes, my God, when the Word of the Lord comes, when the vision comes, amen, it's time to speak, thus saith the Lord. Do you catch what I'm saying tonight, church? Amen. I'm trying to take you somewhere, amen, that we understand and understand understand his voice. I want you to look. Amen. In verse uh, 13 or uh, 29, verse 13 of Jeremiah. Very important scripture that I want y'all to get a hold of tonight. Amen. There's too many false men of God. There's too many false uh, churches. There's too much false junk going around. We've got to be about our Father's business. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's why truth can't be preached. That's why truth cannot be received. Look at verse 13. Amen. Of chapter 29 with me. Amen. He said, and you shall seek me 
and find me. Amen. When you shall search for me with all of your heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why we can tell the difference between the real thing and memorants. That's why we can tell the difference from a fake, from the genuine. That's why we can tell the difference between when somebody, amen, has got a conviction spirit about them and when they really true repent. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Because that person is going to search. My God, he's going to search it out. My God, he's going to hold on to that unchanging hand. There's going to be a difference about him. There's going to be an aura about him. He's going to walk. She's going to walk different. They're going to talk different. They're going to act different. Amen. There's not going to be nothing false about it. Come on. That's right. I know this is hard sometimes. But that's what's been wrong for so long. We've tried to sugarcoat it, church. Amen. We don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. My God, we want to fill up the chairs in the house. Amen. But we're not really worried about the soul. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? I got to go to somebody tomorrow and confront them and let them know. Amen. He wants to be their white knight. Amen. In their church. And he's trying to do it in the flesh. Amen. And we're supposed to work in the spirit. We're not under the old covenant. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't grow a church in the flesh, church. You grow it in the spirit. Amen. Come on. I'm just trying to preach to you. Yes. I'm trying to stir you up. Man, don't let none of them cataracts get on your eyes that you can't see. Yes. Thus saith the Lord. Right. You can't see that faults. Uh, amen in that walk. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Very important, church, that we get a hold of this. Uh, right. Amen. Very important. And you say, well, Brother Kenny, why be so dogmentative about it? Why be so up in the uprage about it? Well, because of what it says in Isaiah chapter 26 or 28, I believe, when he said, hell's enlarged itself. That's why it bothers me. Hell is growing every day, church. It's growing and it's growing and it's growing and it's growing. Amen. And what are we going to do about it? Amen. If we don't stand up. Amen. And so the Lord will see a people, amen, that he can count on. Not a bunch of stiff necks. Not a bunch of people that's self-righteous. But a people that's willing, amen, to go out to the hedges and to the highways and to the byways. That's what the commandment was. To go get them that cannot pay me back. To go get them so they can come in and be redeemed, church. My God, in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you something. This may be a carnal thing, but back when I was framing houses, I had a little 14-year-old boy that would not go to school. He just refused to go to school. And he wanted to work framing houses, and I wasn't working. But my boss finally just said, you're going to have to work him. And I said, yeah, but he'll never amount to nothing if he don't go to school. He'll never amount to nothing if he don't get him some education. And I don't think he ever did. But I want to tell you something. I poured in him and his brother. I poured all my knowledge that I could. I wasn't living for the Lord at the time. But I poured every ounce of my knowledge how to frame a house. How to do it precise. How you could take that blue book and sit there and get the dimensions off of them walls and cut every one of them rafters, amen, and never, never stick one up until you're ready to put it all together, amen. I poured every knowledge that I have in them two boys. And today, my God, today they can build anything. They can build hotels and motels, you name it. My God, they can build it, church, because I poured knowledge. In the day, church, we've got to pour the knowledge. We've got to stand up. My God, because the weak, let me tell you something, if they got the knowledge, knowledge is power. If they can understand, they've got to walk here, they can walk. They can get out of bondage. They can have victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. It ain't about peace. It ain't about church. Amen. Trying to make a million dollars in this world. Am I wrong or right? It's about being sold out to Jesus Christ. 
Having confidence. If I don't wake up in the morning, I know where my soul is. Right. Think about what I'm telling you. So many people want to sugarcoat it. Jesus said that Satan come to do three things. He come to kill, he come to steal, and he come to destroy. And Peter said that Satan was what? Like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Y'all understand what I'm saying tonight? And if you ain't got the truth, come on. That's right. Amen. Devour you. That's right. He'll send by somebody that will tickle your ears for you. Come on. And allow you to know that you've got truth when you don't have nothing but a fake. Right. It was Jeremiah said in chapter two. He said there's two things, Amen, that you've went against God with. Two things. The first one, you disobedient. And the second one, you decided to hew out your own sister. Amen. Yes. You right. hewed out your own sister. You think, amen, that you can hold your own water. You think you can hold your own salvation. Come on. But he said, Jeremiah told him, he said, you're saving a problem. Amen. Mm -hmm. Your cistern's got a hole in it. Right. Your pot's right. got a hole in it. There used to be a song that says, my bucket's got a hole in it. Amen. And that's what's wrong today. If we ain't got Jesus, there's a hole in the bucket. Do you understand? If Jesus ain't in the equation, we in trouble. Amen. But we've got to search this thing out. Amen. We've got to get a hold of Jesus tonight. Amen. We've got to seek him. Amen. And not let up. Amen. We've got to search him out and want to know who he is. Amen. Not do this on the half to mark. Amen. I'm scared not to come to church. I'm scared I'll lose everything. Amen. If I don't come to church, you can't walk in fear with the Lord. Amen. You've got to fear and respect him. Amen. But you cannot walk in fear of what he's going to do. you either going to love him or you ain't going to love him. Right. Amen. And I've taught this many times and I've said this many times. We serve a just and a true God. Amen. He said, I reign on the rich and I reign on the poor. I reign on the just and I reign on the unjust. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. And sometimes when we pray, amen, and we don't get the answer that we want, he's still a just God. Amen. Sometimes amen. people is on their deathbed and we give it all we got. We do what the word says. We go and we lay hands. We anoint them with oil and we amen. pray the prayer of faith. Amen. And sometimes they don't recover. Amen. Sometimes the spirit leads them. Amen. They go, they go back to the ground of where they came from. But let me tell you, I still believe he's a just God. Do you hear what I'm saying? When these babies are born blind, amen, that was the very first funeral I ever preached. Amen, that a child that was blind and its heart was outside of its chest. It lived about two weeks and I was asked to preach, amen, that funeral. And let me tell you something, being a greenhorn trying to preach a funeral and trying to preach that I still serve a just God. God, amen, to a grieving family, to a grieving audience, church, was pretty tough, but I still believe that today, amen, he took that child, amen, and it's all right, he's still a just God, amen, do you hear what I'm saying, he's still a just God, my God, in the name of Jesus, but when you look at the word and understand this, amen, this is Jeremiah said unto Hannah, the old prophet, amen, he said, make sure you hear this in verse 15 of 28. He said, hear now, Hannah, the, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest, amen, thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Do y'all see that? Yes, My God, do you see that, church? Yes. Judgment's coming. If we'll just hold on, Sister Karen, if you'll just hold on. My God, judgment's coming. You're going to see things fall away. Amen. But the true anointing is going to stand. The true anointing church. My God, and you say, well, Brother Kenny, it sounds like that you're against every church. 
I'm not against every church. I want the church to unify. The Bible tells me in Ephesians 4 and 5, there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There's always been one church. There ain't nine million tribes of, of religion out there. You won't find the word religion in the Bible. It's a man-made word. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you don't like it here, you can just go down the street and get you a building and start you up another cult. Amen if you want to. But the Bible tells me that word Jesus said, my word will be here when heaven and earth passes. What I say is going to go. Amen. If he said it was one faith, one Lord, and one baptism, it's one faith, one Lord, and one baptism, church. That's just the way it is. Amen. We've got to beware of the false prophets. We've got to beware, amen, of people. Amen. We look at our children, and my daughter's got a little playhouse in the room. And sometimes she'll get out the teapot. Amen. Setting up house. Though she's seven years old. Amen. Wanting to play mama. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that just reminds me when people with church, they want to come in here and they want to play church. Amen. And they don't want to get right with Jesus. But I can look at my seven-year-old daughter because she watches her mama. Sometimes she'll get in them traits of what mama would do by discipline. What mama would do by trying to fix some of that, uh, some of the meals that mama fixes. Amen. You can see the traits. You can understand. But you can't eat that mess that she's dishing out. You know why? Because it ain't no good. Good. It's fake. It's not real. Do you hear what I'm saying? When you're used to eating the word, when you're used to eating truth, nothing else will do. Amen. When you go back and study about a sheep, a sheep has a specific diet. It just won't eat any grass. Come on, on, let me come say on. this to you. And if you go back and study this, that old shepherd, amen. Amen. When he takes them sheep out, He's got a certain way that he plays that flute. He's got certain songs that he sings. You better listen to me. Amen. And if that shepherd happens to get sick and they bring another shepherd in, well, them sheep won't eat. Them sheep will bow down. They'll sit down and they'll begin to hunger. They'll begin to die out until that one shepherd, by the only shepherd that they understand and only heard his sound and know his voice, then they'll begin to get up. And they'll begin to eat again. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they only know of that one shepherd's voice. They only know to obey to that one shepherd's voice. But you put another shepherd in the fold, church, and they'll sit down and won't eat. They say that their wool will begin, they'll stress, and their wool will begin to fall off. Because they wait on that shepherd to come back. They're waiting on the one that's used there used to being led by. Yes. Think about what I'm telling you. Amen. And today we ought to be that way. Yes. Amen. I don't want nothing but truth. Come on. That's right. Don't give me nothing but truth. Jesus said this in the last days when it's time that he'd separate the sheep from the goats. Goats will jump a fence. Sheep won't jump a fence. Matter of fact, you don't even have to put a fence up for sheep right. because they're not going to get, they just like Macy, they're not going to get outside of the master. As right. long as they see the master, you don't have to have a fence. Right. But she's going to stay right there where you at. If you move this way, she's going to move that way. Right. If you move this way, my dog will move that way. She's right. not going to get outside of me. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying Amen. tonight? You don't have to. But that old goat, he'll get up there against them old posts and he'll begin to push it. And he'll begin to push, and he'll begin to put his head, amen, that he waters him out of hole, amen, that they can begin to escape. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right, because on. they'll look at them weeds that's in that other pasture, amen, instead of eating good grass. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because a goat will eat right. anything. Right. Amen. They're willing to jump across there and eat the cuckleburrs. They're willing to eat the briars. They're willing to eat the cans, amen. They're willing to eat anything. Amen. My uncle took they used to have goats, and I used to go out there and I used to wrestle with them goats. And one day I got tired, Sister Crystal, and I decided to lay down, amen, because as a kid, amen, I just laid down and that billy goat come over there and just took and ripped my shirt off and began to eat it from me. 
<laughs> he just grabbed it right there and snatched it off and ain't had a faith give me one rod in his shirt. Uh, amen. Because that, that goat just decided to go to eat and he'll eat anything. Right. Amen. It won't just eat grass, it'll eat anything. <laughs> amen. And I'm telling you today, church, uh, when you eat anything, all that's going to do is tear your stomach up. Uh, you you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't going to be able to digest this right. Uh, you're going to look like, amen, your bones is going to show up. Uh, amen. And all, you ain't going to have the right nutrition. Right. You're not going to be able to weather a storm, amen, right. in this thing, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why it's important uh, to be able, when Jesus said, my sheep uh, know my voice, uh, that's why it's important to search him out of what it says in Jeremiah 29, 13. That's why it's important to know who your king is, Amen. who you serve, who you bow down to. Amen. That's why it's so important, church. Amen. Because you can be led astray in this thing in the last days. You can be led. And let me tell you something. Jesus made a statement. And some people don't like this statement because they say he's merciful. He loves me. Amen. He wouldn't do that. But Jesus stood up and said this. And you listen to it real closely. He said, if the blind lead the blind, let them both fall in the ditch. Not the one that's leading, but he said, let them both fall in the ditch. Because why? He died on the cross. He made a way that everybody could open that word. Everybody could come to the altar and repent and be baptized. Everybody could receive, amen, his spirit inside of them. Do you hear what I'm saying? So if you're willing to follow a false man of God, you're going to go where the false man of God goes, church. I know that's hard preaching to you, but it's all right. The word says, let God be true and every man a liar. And what are you saying, Brother Kenny? You a liar of what I'm telling you by what I've said. You back up to that word. And what I've said tonight don't match to that word. I'm a liar. Bottom line. And that's just the way it goes. That's the way the cookie crumbles tonight. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. When you seek Him, Amen. you will find Him. Right. When you seek Him with all your heart. Yes. Don't have heart at this. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Let me tell you this. Jesus just didn't give part of His life on this cross. Ooh. He gave all of His life Thank on this cross. Amen. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but if I had the power to call down the 12 legion of angels, yeah, I don't know if I could have took somebody spitting in my face. Right, come on. I don't know if I could have took being beat with reeds and being made in front of them, I hold the power. It had to be love that nailed him to the cross. It had to be love. Yes. Brother, it had to be love to nail him to the cross. Amen. My God, Amen. in the name of Jesus. He didn't halfway do it for you and I. That's right. He went all the way. Amen. By God. So how can we now? How can we now follow something that's not real? Think about what I'm telling you. Right. How can we follow something that's not real? My God, in the name of Jesus. How can we follow that? When Jesus done all that for us. He was wounded for our transgression, the word says. Anytime we make a mistake, my God, we can come back and repent. Think about it. He was beat. He was wounded, my God. He was beat. And them stripes is where we could be healed. We could call on Him. What a bloodbath it must have been in that courtyard as they beat Him that day. One thing that drives me crazy about things is what, how the world can perceive things, and yet the church cannot. I ain't always lived for the Lord. I used to watch every one of them Mel Gibson movies, and I'm not painting roses on him. I don't believe it uplifted a man. But how can a man, how can somebody... If you know Mel Gibson, all the movies he's ever played in, ain't been a pretty one. But you know that word has to be strong for him to be able to sit down and read them four gospels. 
and him getting insight on how our Lord was beaten. I love them Jesus movies back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s as they brought them. But I'm going to tell you something. As I watched them beat him, I said, this has got to be how it was done. Because I'm going to tell you something. That power of surrender. Oh, hallelujah. My God. That power of being able to surrender himself, to be beat, to be put on a whipping post. That we could call on his name today. My God, how could you want to eat anything else? How could you want to eat anything else, church? Is there any other kind of diet that you would want to eat from? How can you want to follow somebody else that's not telling you the truth? Yeah. My God, in the name of Jesus. The word told, Jeremiah told Hananiah, he said, because of this, this year you will die because you have prophesied a lie. My God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. I just wish right now that we would just get us a place. If you want to make an altar where you're at, and just begin to pray and say, Lord, don't let me be deceived. Don't let me be deceived. My God, you remember what I preached to you last Thursday night about being beguiled? You remember that? Real hard to tell the difference. Come on. Eve could not tell the difference. Is the serpent telling me really the truth? Is this God that all I can hear is His voice? Maybe He's not really who He says He is. Think about what I'm telling you. My God, how would history be changed today if she had not been deceived? Where would we be today? My God. Think about it. find us a place. I've, I've given you what the Lord's wanted you to have, my God. I won't change. I, I, I won't change inside of here. I'm not trying to be up anybody. But somebody that's trying to walk in the flesh, I want my spirit, amen, to be hot enough, to be genuine enough, amen, my God, that it will convict them and say, will you teach me? Will you help me get where you at? I'm nobody. But I want to be able to lead them to the cross that they can get the Holy Ghost. They can get Jesus inside of them. That they be not deceived. My God, we're in the last days, church. We're in the last days. My God, my God, my God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we come before you tonight, Lord, God, we ask Him, Jesus, for change. Lord God, we ask Him for change tonight. Lord, don't let us be deceived, Jesus. But Lord God, let us hear Your voice. Let us hear Your voice, O oh God. Lord, allow You to give us direction that we need, Jesus, I pray. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, Jesus. Lord, let us seek you out with everything that we got, Lord God, that we'll know that it's you. Lord, your word says when we get to this place that we'll find you in the midst of a storm. We'll find you in tribulation. We'll find you in a turmoil. When we seek you out, Lord God. Lord, let us rest in you, Jesus, I pray. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. 
God, mighty God, in your name, Jesus. Lord, let your Holy Ghost reign in this place. Lord, let it reign in our lives, Lord God. Let it correct us, Jesus, I pray. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Lord, I don't want to heal out me, no sister, Lord. Lord God, I want you to be full of you, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, I want you to shake and mold me like you do.
got a lot of sick folk out. I know it. My God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Lord God, we praise you. Lord God, you know all things, Jesus. You know all things, Lord God, Jesus. You know all things, Hallelujah. My God, my God, I ask you right now, Jesus. Lord, you know all things, Jesus. He's come many times. He's like the man in the pool of Bethesda, Lord Jesus. Come many times, Lord God, trying, trying to get healed, Lord Jesus. Trying to get, Lord God, satisfaction from this place. And Lord God, you have said that we could ask, Lord God, in your name and that we could receive in your name, Jesus. Lord, that's your words. I didn't make them up. Lord, I ask right now, Lord God. Lord, if they be anything that's hindering, Lord God, this healing, this desire, whatever it may be, Jesus. Lord God, I'm asking right now, Lord God, to show it that we can bind it and get rid of it. But Lord, if they be nothing, Lord God, between you and my dad, Lord Jesus. Lord, I'm asking right now, God, that you would begin to breathe upon him, Lord. Lord God, that you begin to do a work, Lord God, only that you could do, Jesus. And Lord God, I'm asking right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I'm asking that this covenant, Lord God, between you and he, Lord God, be sealed right now, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, you don't go back on your word, Lord. You do not go back on your word, Lord Jesus. And I refuse to believe tonight, God. Lord God, to the God that I serve, Lord Jesus, that you would not show mercy tonight, that you would not show love tonight, that you would not show compassion tonight, God, for your sake, Lord God. I will refuse to believe that, Lord Jesus. But Lord, I come in your name, God, and I command it to anoint with oil, and I command it to pray the prayer of faith, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I have done this tonight, God, and I believe it, Lord God, that he'll lead, Lord God. Not the same way that he got here tonight, Lord God. But, Lord God, he'll walk out, Lord God, different, Jesus. I ask it in your name, Almighty God. I ask it in your name, Jesus. In the power that you hold, Lord God. The power that you hold, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God. Whoa, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, mighty God. Search our hearts, oh God. Search our hearts. 